Legacy chips? Yeah, they're pretty much done. We're entering a new chapter in technology, not a continuation, but a full-on disruption. And the company at the center of it is Huawei. For a long time, most people assumed the story was over for them. Sanctions hit. Access to U.S. tech was cut off. Supply chains were crushed. It looked like a shutdown, not a comeback. But instead of collapsing, they did something different. Something bold. While the rest of the world was busy writing them off, they were engineering a future. And now, that future has arrived. Imagine waking up and your phone doesn't just feel faster, it thinks faster. Your AI tools don't just work, they learn faster, use less energy, and integrate more deeply into your life. Even your car, it becomes smarter, more aware, more efficient. This isn't five years from now, it's already starting. What Huawei just released isn't just a chip. It's a declaration, a statement that the game has changed, that the old rules no longer apply, that innovation doesn't stop at the border of a trade sanction. We're talking about a fundamental shift in computing, starting with the chip itself. While the tech world has been content pushing binary logic to its limits, ones and zeros, Huawei has leapt into ternary logic, not just a new product, a new paradigm. They're building chips that operate on three states instead of two. One, zero, and something in between. It's like going from black and white TV to full spectrum color. Fewer transistors, lower power consumption, smaller dyes, higher performance, less heat, better AI, more efficient smartphones, entirely new possibilities. Now, if this scales, and early signs suggest it might, it's going to disrupt everything from data centers to edge computing. This isn't an upgrade, this is a foundational rewrite. And how did they even get here? That's the wild part. Because in 2020, it looked like Huawei was done. The US had imposed some of the toughest tech sanctions we've ever seen. Cutting off access to American chips, software, foundries, even basic semiconductor tools. TSMC stopped shipments. Qualcomm? Gone. Intel? Cut off. Their flagship chips, the Kirin series, the Ascend line, were suddenly stranded. Most companies would have folded under that kind of pressure. Huawei didn't. They pivoted. Fast. They went all in on self-reliance. Partnered with SMIC. Poured billions into R&D. Started exploring techniques no one was really betting on. And now, we're seeing the results. Not just as concepts, but as products. They're producing 5NM, maybe even 3M class chips without access to extreme ultraviolet EUV lithography. That's the gold standard for advanced chip making, and they don't have it. So what did they do? They built around it. They're using deep ultraviolet DEV lithography, multiple patterning techniques. Some say they're even testing a new method, laser-induced discharge plasma. Sounds like science fiction, but according to people close to the facility in Dongguan, it's very real. And they're shipping. The Mate 60 Pro launched with a domestically built 7NM Kirin 9000S. That was the moment people realized Huawei's not just surviving, they're innovating at a pace that rivals the industry leaders. Let's talk AI, because this is where things really start to scale. Huawei's Ascend 910C chip is already in play and the 920C is on the way. These chips are optimized for AI inference and training, going head-to-head -head with NVIDIA's high-end GPUs. Now, NVIDIA's CUDA ecosystem is still dominant, no question. But Huawei's closing the gap, fast. They're running full-scale LLMs like DeepSeek, a Chinese-developed AI model, on Ascend chips. And it's competitive, efficient, cheaper. This is what a parallel tech stack looks like. One that's not dependent on Western Silicon. If you're a startup or research team priced out of NVIDIA's ecosystem, this changes everything. And we're seeing the ripple effects. Huawei's smartphone business, left for dead in 2020, is surging again. In 2024, they shipped over 45 million phones, a 25% year-over-year jump. Why? Because they're not relying on Qualcomm anymore. They've got the Kirin X90 chip, they've got national certifications for security, and they've got Harmony OS, their in-house operating system. 
that's now challenging Android and iOS on its own terms. What they're building is an ecosystem, hardware, software, chips, OS, services, end-to-end -end control, no dependencies, total stack autonomy. And it's not just about market share, it's about resilience, strategy, independence. Now, zoom out, this entire transformation is reshaping global tech dynamics. The sanctions were meant to halt Huawei and by extension slow China's rise in semiconductors. But instead it lit a fire. Necessity drove invention, and Huawei, backed by the sheer force of ambition and pressure, became the blueprint for how to innovate under constraint. TSMC, still the global leader in chip fabrication, is now under investigation for allegedly helping Huawei through intermediaries. That could lead to massive fines, maybe over a billion dollars. But again, the real cost isn't financial, it's symbolic. The message is clear. Huawei found a way through, and that means others can too. And now we get to the sustainability angle. This part is often overlooked, but it's critical. AI data centers today are energy monsters. As we scale models, the power requirements skyrocket. But ternary logic, more efficient chip designs, new architectures, they can change that trajectory. Reduce the carbon footprint, make AI greener, make the tech future more sustainable by design. That's not just a win for performance, that's a win for the planet. So what's next? Huawei's not slowing down. The Ascend 920C is on the horizon. Harmony OS is expanding. Ternary logic isn't just a patent. It's inching toward commercialization. And if that happens, we're not just talking about one company leading the charge. We're talking about the birth of an entirely new era in computing. Faster, smarter, more efficient, more sustainable. This isn't just a comeback story. It's a reinvention story. It's a challenge to the old order. It's proof that innovation doesn't stop because someone says it should. It adapts. It accelerates. It evolves. Huawei didn't just beat the odds, they changed the game. And the world's watching. So, here's the question. Is this the start of a new tech order? A new global balance in computing? Or are we still early? Drop your thoughts, start a conversation, share this with someone who thinks chips are just about phones, and show them it's so much more than that. And if you want to keep your pulse on what's really happening in tech, the stuff under the radar, the breakthroughs that rewrite the rules, stay curious, stay engaged. Because this, this is just the beginning.